Okay. A um, couple things so we can get started. Um, I've already co copied the chat. So. Uh, just heads up, the chat actually gives me a time stamp when you put something in the chat. So it helps me to uh, see what time you logged in. Or in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up a marking tool. And whoever puts it in the chat first, okay, you guys ready for this? Whoever puts it in the chat first uh, gets 10 points of extra credit. So are you guys ready? You need to put the correct name in the chat. All right, what is this? Everybody see it? Okay, first one to put it in the chat gets 10 extra credit points. Okay, I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna do a couple more. So, uh, be ready. I don't have anybody put anything in the chat so far, so I'm gonna hold up one more. What is this called? First one who puts it in the chat gets 10 extra credit points. I'll do one more. Again, what is this tool called? A tri-square. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. <laughs> okay, last one. Remember, the chat has a timestamp, so if you put it in the chat, then... I can check the times, whoever put it up there first. Okay, we're going to do one more. Okay, here we go. What's this? A triangle is not correct. A protractor is not correct. An angle rule is not correct. Still waiting. I don't see anybody who's put it in right yet. I'll give you a hint. Nope. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I think I got it, I got it, I think I got it. No, it's hella familiar. Nope. Ah. Nope, nope. There it is. Arlene, you got it right, that's a speed square, awesome. Okay, so. I'm going to hold up this so you guys can see it. Okay, this is a uh, circular saw. In this case, it's a DeWalt circular saw. And this is also called a worm drive saw. And here's the reason. Because the motor is back here. It's not on the side. The motor's back here and it has a gear that turns this way that connects to a gear that turns the saw this way. So it's called a worm drive because it's got a gear that goes like this. The motor's on the side. The reason the motor's on the side is because it's easier to uh, make certain cuts when you're on the construction job. Uh, sorry, construction site. It's easier to make uh, cuts with the motor on the side. Um, so a couple things with this saw. And what I'm going to do is change cameras because this gets, it's pretty heavy. I can barely hold it up with one hand. If you're not strong enough, it's it's quite heavy. So I'm going to change cameras real quick because I want don't want to have to hold it up. So hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to bring this in a little bit closer so you guys can see this saw. Hold on one second.
So, one of the good things about this saw is that it has this, this hook right here. We call these a sky hook, and this is so that when you're on a construction site and you're up on floor joists or you're up on rafters, that you have some place to put your saw. So it basically just hooks on whatever you can hook it on, and then your saw stays off the ground. Now sometimes uh, you'll even make something like this on a saw horse, so you don't put the saw on the ground, right? All right. So what I want to do is show you the different parts of the saw. So let me adjust this camera real quick. Okay, so we talked about the sky hook. That's this thing right here. Okay, it just folds out of the way. If you don't need it, then it's just going to fold out of the way. This little thing here is for oil. So this, just unloosen this nut, and that's where you put oil into it. It needs oil so that the motor doesn't burn out and the gears don't burn out. So anytime you buy a new saw. Uh, it's recommended that you check that to make sure that it has oil in it and sometimes it even comes with a little squeeze tube of oil so you can put oil inside the saw. Okay. This is the handle. And usually when you're cutting you're using two hands just like this. Okay. So you have a handle here, you have a handle here, and then this is the trigger. Okay. And Pull the trigger, the saw turns on. Now one of the things about the saw is it it has a lot of torque and it is quite heavy. I'm not sure how much it weighs. It probably weighs maybe 20, 25 pounds. So it is a pretty heavy saw. And there's a number of things that you need to know about it. One thing is for certain, the cord, you want to make sure when you're cutting that the cord never gets where the blade is. So you always want to put the cord behind you so that it's not getting in the way when you're making a cut, right? It has a guard, okay? The guard has a spring on it so that as you cut here, the guard comes up and then it'll, it'll come back. Um, when I worked in construction, hold on a second. I have to be aware of where my cameras are so that I get a good um, picture of the demonstration. So when I was in construction, we used to do things like stick a nail in here to keep the guard up so the guard was exposed. In fact, my skill saw, I took this completely off, unbolted this pulled the guard off so I never had a guard, um, which is illegal according to Cal OSHA. Um, if you haven't heard the term Cal OSHA before, that's the agency that uh, regulates job site safety in California uh, OSHA. So uh, there's certain things about work type safety that are important. And one of those things was to make sure that all skill saws had a guard. Um, I personally, in all the years I worked in construction, I never had an OSHA inspector come out to a job site, so uh, eventually what I did do was stop putting my guard up and leaving a guard on the skill saw. It, it's just a lot safer. I never hurt myself with a skill saw, but there's always that chance. So now, um, my skill saw at home has a guard. So it does have a few adjustments. This right here will adjust the angle of the table. So the table tilts, okay? So you can make bevel cuts, and it comes in handy if you're cutting um, rafters or making an angle cut on a piece of 2 by 4 that you need to put up. It does adjust for the height on the guard. So a lot of times when you're making a cut on a piece of material, 
I'm going to move this a little bit. You're not going to make that cut with that saw and the blade sticking all the way out here because it's going to be really dangerous. So you want to adjust the level of the, of the blade or the table and pulling it up just so that you barely cut what you're trying to cut. I'm going to go ahead and mark this and make that cut so you guys can actually see it. And this is probably not the proper way to mark this, but I do want you guys to see. All right. So I'm going to make this cut. I've already adjusted the table. I made sure that my cut is away from the workbench that I'm working on. Um, and this has a little notch right here. And this notch will tell you where the blade is depending on uh, how you want it to cut. So you always start the saw away so the blade's not touching the material. You don't want to start it right with the blade up against the material because it'll grab it and jerk that saw up. You don't want that to happen. So start the saw away. Okay, I want you to notice something that when I came to the end of the cut, I actually let go of the trigger, so by the time the board cut off and fell to the ground, the blade had actually stopped. One of the other things that you notice is I put the saw on its side if I'm on the table. And that's just an old habit from being on a construction site. I always used to cut and then put the saw away from me with the blade away from me because I never had a guard on my saw. So in order to make sure that the blade was never facing me, I always set the saw down that way. I'm going to make an adjustment again so that it cuts all the way. And I'm going to cut on this 2x4. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and measure just a couple inches off of there. So I'm going to use this tri-square and I'm going to come to the end here. Now normally people would just put a simple mark like that and you can't see it. Uh, or maybe you can, I'm not sure. But I always used to mark like that with an arrow, okay, or a point of an arrow. So you want to make sure that that's how you mark stuff so it doesn't, uh, you find your mark, right? Sometimes I would even do this, okay, so that I know exactly where my mark's at. I'm going to go ahead and use a speed square. There's my line. Hold it on our foot like so. Alright? Pick up the saw and make that cut. Put the saw down. Okay. Okay. Now, I did that only to show you that that's not something I want you to do. Okay? I don't want you to make any cuts that way. When you get onto a construction site, you might have to, but I don't want you to do that. I want you to put a board on a table like this, and if possible, you can clamp it down so you can make that cut, okay? Now, I'm gonna make a different kind of cut. And let's just say that I needed to cut a hole inside of here, okay? I would make what's called a plunge cut. And I'm gonna adjust this so that I get more material out side. And I do have a clamp on this so that it's not gonna go anywhere. So let's just say that I needed to cut a hole out of this. I'm not gonna mark it, I'm just gonna cut it so you can see it. This is called a plunge cut, okay? You start the saw and you use your fingers, and I usually use my thumb so that I know where my fingers are, right? They're not near the blade. And I'm just gonna cut down on this board. Make another cut on this side. Okay. 
sometimes, especially on a construction site, you would need to make this type of cut if you're putting down um, a, f a piece of uh, floorboard like this is under layment so that you can put a pipe through this hole. So you'd have to make what's called a plunge cut. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is probably one of the most dangerous saws that you could use because it has a tendency to do kickback and I'll show you how that happens. Okay, let's just say that I was cutting this board and I put a mark on it. I put it on top of another board there and then I put it on another board here and I was going to make this cut right here. Okay. Now, if I started to cut on this with the skill saw, what happens is once it gets to a certain point, this board is going to start to bend. And that's going to cause the wood to bend around the, the blade and cause it to kick back. So anytime you're cutting with a skill saw, you want to make sure that the piece you're cutting drops freely. Okay? It's not going to get in between two support areas to cause it to bend on itself. That's how you get kicked back. Okay? You always want it to drop freely. Now, in construction, we used to say that, hey, if it's within a quarter of an inch, it's close enough. Um, you can get a little bit more precise than that as far as your measurement. It should be around an eighth. But if it's within a quarter, especially if you're building a home, no one's going to see a quarter inch. It's just, they're not going to see it. So if you can cut things without taking out your tape measure, you're going to be faster at what you do on the construction side. All right. So any questions about the skill saw? Anyone? You can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your questions. All right, has anybody ever used a skill saw? Just say yes. Yeah. Okay, on a job site or? Yeah. For the cartel. For the cartel, is that what you said? <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Okay, so that's the demonstration for today on the skill saw. And I'm going to pick another power tool to do another one tomorrow. Cut it so you can see it. This is called a plunge cut, okay? So you start the saw and you use your fingers, and I usually use my thumb so that I know where my fingers are, right? They're not near the blade. And I'm just going to cut down on this board.